I decided to revisit How to Train Your Dragon because it felt like an amazing opportunity to not only direct a live action movie, but to be jumping back into a world that I frankly miss. Here we go. Finish the script. First draft. I miss these characters. I missed this world, and I love movies that have a really poignant message buried deep within a moving spectacle, adventure, wonder. And that's what this movie really packs. It's okay. I won't hurt you. It's about a regular kid who gets to bond with a powerful animal, and there is something that's universally wish-fulfilling about that. But at its core, this is really a story about finding your voice and being brave enough to follow your own convictions in a world that wants you to become like everyone else. Dad, I can't kill dragons. Marching to the beat of your own drum has been such an important lesson for me in my life that I love to carry that forward. I suppose it's just one question, really, is would you like to play Hiccup in the movie? There's no way. There's no way, are you serious? Thank you. Oh my, I can't, this is the best moment of my life. Would you like to play Astrid in How to Train Your Dragon? Oh, <laughs> of course. When it comes to Nico and Mason, these two just sort of came alive in the room and suddenly I felt that they both embodied the core character of Hiccup and Astrid live in a way that nobody else could. Gerard Butler is stoic. He is the co-creator of the role. To watch him step right out of the animated movie and here he is in front of you, Stoic the Vast, it's such a treat to watch. My hope is that those who had seen and loved the How to Train Your Dragon films will be keen to see what we've done because it comes from a place of love and it comes from a place of respect. This whole thing is just one big giant adventure and I wake up every day feeling so thankful that I get to do it. Welcome to Barrett.